My name is Susan Easton Black. I'm a professor in religion at Brigham Young University. I was born a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I was baptized at age eight by my father. And during the time I was growing up, my grandmother lived in our home. Uh, her job, among uh, many other responsibilities, was to make sure that I went to sleep. She would tell me stories at night, and she would tell me stories about a man named Joseph Smith, stories about people in the Book of Mormon, and about pioneers. The stories I had remembered uh, at the most was about pioneers, particularly my own ancestors. I remember her telling me about a young girl that crossed the plains, escaped from religious persecution, and arrived in the Salt Lake Valley with gunny sacks on her feet. Uh, my grandmother asked me, would, would you have done that? And my comment was, no, what, what if someone had seen me? And suddenly my grandmother said, she had faith and you don't. Now, I actually took that as a challenge, and I suppose the challenge is still on. As, uh, as a young girl, I would read scriptures um, with a flashlight in bed when it was told that light should go off. I would read such books as a History of Joseph Smith by his mother, Lucy Max Smith. I'd read books like the autobiography of Parley P. Pratt, one of the great apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it was not long until I began to realize that I was reading to write. Through the process, I uh, have written many, many books, and several of them now on a man named Joseph Smith. Through that process, I've learned some very interesting things. I've learned that from the time of his youthful utterance there in the Palmyra woods in the spring of 1820 to his manly cry in the jail at Carthage, that Joseph Smith was all that he said he was, that he was truly called by God to be a prophet, much like other prophets that have walked the earth, such as Moses, Isaiah, Elijah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, if you were to say, what do I think about his teachings? He teaches us about God the Father, that God the Father loves us, and that we are his children. He teaches us about Jesus Christ. We learn about Christ through the Holy Bible. But in addition, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, I learned about Jesus Christ in the Book of Mormon. I decided to make a most unusual study of that book. It was actually a simple process, but I went, went through the book and underlined every time the name of Christ appeared. I found that there were, on an average of every 1.7 verses, the name of Christ appeared. If you were to compare that to the New Testament, on an average, every 2.1 verses has the name of Christ. If you were to say, just by word count of long, which scripture is the greater witness for Jesus Christ? Hands down, it's the Book of Mormon. Now what's been so interesting to me is as life has gone on, I pursued a doctorate and then was fortunate enough to be a professor. For 30 years now, I've been a professor at Brigham Young University. During, during these years, I've had an opportunity to teach many subjects. My most favorite has always been about the life of Joseph Smith. I've had a chance to read primary sources. I've had a chance to travel where Joseph traveled, to literally live at times where he's lived. I've seen people who have said, I don't think Joseph's a prophet. You know, I, I'd really like your church. I like the idea about families can be together forever. I like the idea about being morally clean and not smoking and not drinking. But it's at Joseph Smith that I struggle with. I then say to them, without Joseph Smith, 
the prophet of the restoration. All the things that you say you like about our church, it just wouldn't happen. Because Joseph was a prophet, because of Joseph Smith, I know that my husband has the authority to act in the name of God, that when I'm sick, he can give me a blessing. I also know that my husband, because he has the authority to act in the name of God, that he has the right to ordain our children to various priesthood offices. I joyed when my son became a deacon, when he became an elder, and I'm forever grateful for their lives, and more especially for the life of my great husband. I also know that because of Joseph Smith, I've been privileged to be sealed to my husband for time and all eternity. You know, as time passes and we get older, we know that we have the privilege to be together forever. Now the question is, wouldn't you like that for you too? Wouldn't you like to know that you had the right to call on our Heavenly Father, that you could kneel in prayer? Wouldn't you like the blessing of knowing that you had the priesthood in your home, that you had somebody in your home that loved you and that was worthy to act in the name of our Father in Heaven? Well, I feel most blessed. If you were to ask, how do I feel about the Prophet Joseph Smith? I love his memory. I love what he taught. I am always overwhelmed by his sacrifice. I am overwhelmed by his statement that he could not deny it, and he would not, lest he come under condemnation of God. I will be forever grateful for a man named Joseph Smith. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints is the Lord's Church upon the earth. I know that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. I also know that the men that have succeeded him as president of the Church are also prophets of God. It is my hope that you will take the time to read the Book of Mormon, to find uh, the Church, the Mormon Church in your area, to pray, to ask our Father in Heaven if the Book of Mormon is true. I testify that if you will do these things with uh, sincerity and be humble, that you will find greater joy and happiness in this life than you had ever imagined.